So we decided that it was, despite Rusted has just finished another talk, <laughs> it was uh, very important to give space uh, to their incredible project, uh, uh, what they saw. Um, photo books by women from the 19th century till the, the late 90s. And we are very uh, lucky to also have the uh, book designer with uh, us. Ayumi Higuchi, who Ayumi designed Higuchi. the book for us. Yeah. Uh, um, we're waiting for the PDF to uh, show. Yeah, it should work. You can try, yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so obviously, let's try not to repeat what you just said in, uh, in the other talk. But um, I was wondering, I mean, with these meta photo book, uh, uh, books on photo books, uh, I wonder, uh, it's always like, uh, it's always obvious why you do such a project, because obviously, uh, books by women uh, needed uh, more attention, more critical inquiry, more scholarship. Um, but the very uh, challenging aspect is how you do such a book. So um, if you could uh, start, maybe Rasset, to tell us a little bit more about the methodology and the uh, approaches that you uh, chose to um, compose this uh, anthology, if I may call it. Um, I, I have to say my co-editor, who is named Olga Yaskavich, is unfortunately not here. She remains in New York. Um, but we worked uh, jointly together on this project along with our associate editor, Dolly Mirren. And we had a loose idea that grew out of an earlier project called How We See, which was based on contemporary photography books by women. And many people asked us you know, to kind of what happened before, because that book started at about you know, 2000, 2010. So we decided it was time to kind of look backwards to uh, take a brief reference list that had been in that first anthology and expand it. And COVID hit, and since we were doing books on books, the physicality of the book that we were to create and, and make was a key important aspect of how we approach it. So we approached it with design on the forefront. We were simultaneously doing our research, and I reached out to Ayumi, who is associated with Foam Magazine as well, and we gave her our general kind of sense of, okay, we're going from 1843 to 1999. What do you propose? And we had a whole bunch of lists of kind of quirky things like making this timeline, which were events that were uh, important, whether in feminist history or photo book history, but didn't necessarily produce a book that was created solely by a woman. It might have been a collaboration, it might have had attribution that's a little unknown. So I, I asked Ayumi to join me up here because she came up with these incredibly elegant design solutions to, to also make an object and to integrate all this kind of dispersed information that we were trying to put together, things that were clear and finite. We also were redefining what a book was because we felt that so many uh, women didn't have the financial opportunity, whether it was due to their economic situation or where they lived in the world to be able to produce a book. So we had to expand our idea and definition of a book. So the physicality of the book we would produce was so critical. And I, I, I'm gonna ask Ayumi to talk a little bit about the design, if you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, I actually have a question for her because uh, I was wondering, when you are dealing with a, uh, a project that spans from the 19th century to the late 90s, uh, how challenging it is to you know, find uh, a graphic uh, style that, uh, in a way, um, speaks to uh, books of all epochs. And I wonder what inspired you uh, to come up with this um, idea. Well, um, first, thank you for the compliment, that's it. But uh, as you see, the material is so rich, 
and so diverse, and there are different uh, priorities for each book and uh, each uh, information. And uh, yeah, it was really natural to come up with a solution of a timeline to organize all diversity of this material. So somehow there's no external inspiration. It comes through material. It was in internal inspiration, I would say. Thank you. In terms of, um, of course, this book mingles classics books that are uh, well known and, and some real uh, total discoveries that uh, uh, I'm sure will uh, trigger and generate uh, further research. So I wonder if, are you thinking, Rasset, of like, uh, because the beauty of a book is that it's done, it's printed, and you can't change it in a way. But this is such an ongoing, massive topic and project that I wonder if you're thinking of uh, transforming the book in, in a sort of like digital platform that can be updated um, con in the future with uh, new discoveries that this research will trigger. Well, uh, those of us who are interested in books, we all know that there is uh, now cottage industry of books on books. We have books on every region of the world. We have books on every uh, theme imaginable, the nude, uh, magnum photographers. So in doing a books on book, uh, the danger is that they become these kind of fixed, stagnant histories. And, and I do see history as very fluid. And I do see that what we put in this anthology uh, opens the door a crack and may need to have other things added to it later on. So um, the issue of when to stop is a hard one. You just, I think you pick arbitrarily a moment and you say, okay, we're stopping for now. But we are already, the moment we went to press, keeping an ongoing uh, Google Doc on new discoveries. So the idea is, well, maybe we amend this book. Sorry, Ayumi, <laughs> which means more, book, more work for Ayumi. Um, or we make a follow-up. But I think uh, one of the things I should say is we uh, worked with 20 writers. And the writers range from well-known writers, men and women. We approached also gender in a pretty fluid way. There are books on cross-dressers. There are books uh, that are done by gay women. And so we kind of uh, see the, the process of this as something that's very organic and that we want the book to also be defined uh, organically. Is it a zine? Is it a individual book? Is it a trade publication? Was it done for advertising? Was it done for fashion? All of these are, are viable, so. And also, um, I remember you told me that this was also a, a very collaborative project where it became an opportunity for students to um, yeah. experiment with their, their own research skills and writing. That was where I was headed before, and I just got sidetracked. Uh, yes, we, we hired 20 writers. About uh, 10 of them were graduate students from uh, Columbia University, City University of New York, uh, Boston University, University of California. Uh, some were working in museums. Actually, a few actually contributed to this book and to another shortlisted book. And our goal was by opening the door that crack, we invited them to be the next researchers to get excited about this topic. We also give grants to photo book history. And so um, this is another way that we kind of keep this fluid history being added to or, or modified and amended. If I, I just am conscious about time, because yeah. we only have 15 minutes, unfortunately. Uh, so I wonder if there is any question from the public. Otherwise, I, I mean, I, I could go on for ages, of course, but no? No questions from the public? OK. Fine. So um, of course, you can't uh, generalize uh, in terms of themes, uh, topics treated, etc. But I was uh, particularly intrigued by the way you structured uh, and entitled the chapters. 
so that uh, each chapter has a specific uh, focus. Of course, there is a chronological order, but also the chapters are quite uh, intriguing in terms of exploring like uh, th themes that maybe were common uh, among uh, books. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about how you came about with the chapters. Uh, honestly, I didn't know if we were going to title the chapters and because uh, we work on a chronology in this book. But when we got the proposal from Ayumi, it had chapter titles in it. <laughs> and, and it really looked good. <laughs> so we adapted in that sense, uh, rather than just going with a, a year to, to give a title to them. Uh, but I should say that we looked very closely to not just do photo history, but look at what was happening in cultural history, to look at what was happening politically, to look at what was happening uh, just in the world at that moment, and what might have been the things that both impeded and empowered the woman. For example, during the war, women were called in to do the work that men were doing because they were off at war during World War II. And so you had women obviously empowered, and then when the 1950s came, right after the war, they were kind of asked to go back to the home and uh, stop working and take on a more domestic role. So we wanted to look at these uh, cultural and societal shifts as we looked at photo books. And where can people find this book here? Uh, uh, it's sold out at Del Pier, I'm sorry to Whoa. say, but they are taking orders. Uh, you can also find it at La Ball. You can also find it at Polycopies. You can also find it, uh, who else? Our, our distributor online is ideabooks.nl. So for European buyers, it's, it's not shipped from America. It's shipped from within Europe. And um, yeah. And congratulations on winning the Catalog of the Year uh, award. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the ice talks are back here tomorrow at 2 p.m. Thank you very much.